name. As a boy, he always knew a sailor he would be, so he studied the law of the sea. Captain of his crew, a brave and vicious man, determined to explore, he discovered a new land. The sun and sky, and his heart would be his guide, a man of valor and pride. The king and queen, their blessings he obtained to carry the flag of Spain. And rain, a strong, courageous man, determined to explore, he discovered a new land. The sails raised high, he searched the great unknown, his quest for adventure, dispelling any fear. A sure, courageous man, Columbus it was he, who sailed to new horizons across the great blue. What is it, Columbus? I have just now heard the news. Our academy is sending a ship to Africa. I'd like to join the expedition. Hmm? Hmm. Thank you for volunteering, Columbus. But we've chosen our officers. Huh? Oh. Don Pedro here will command the ship. That's right, Columbus. And I could never tolerate a junior officer as ill-mannered as you are. Why, you haven't even removed your hat. Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Please reconsider. Hmm? I haven't told you until now. I'm an experienced seaman. Huh? You are? Yes, and Don Pedro isn't. Mm. Oh. Hmm. Hmm. Wait. Don Pedro may have less experience than you, but we have faith in his abilities. You are a low-born foreigner. We'd never entrust a ship to you. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Now, excuse us. Wait, wait. Hmm? I have a question. Well, what is it? Will you continue to treat me unfairly simply because I happen to be a commoner of Genoese origin? Uh, hmm. What an impudent question. There's nothing unfair about favoring Portuguese students over you. After all, we are in Portugal. Yes, I know that. But I had thought students were treated justly here according to their merits. Oh, if you think this school is unjust, then you shouldn't be studying here! Enough. You must go now. <sighs> all right, I will go. I come to thee seeking guidance. My heart is filled with frustration. I was so eager to study at the academy, but now I know I cannot stay there any longer. So I will return to sea. When I came to Lisbon, I felt something wonderful awaited me here, something that would change my life, but what? I didn't mean to disturb you. Oh, that's all right. I've finished my prayers. <sighs> You're leaving the Academy of Navigation? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Had a change of heart, did you? Well, not exactly. No need to explain. A sailor shouldn't be cooped up in the classroom. <laughs> Senior Rossi, can you find a job for me? Sure, sure. I have a ship sailing for Italy next... No, huh? I want to sail on the Atlantic. You do? Most sailors prefer the Mediterranean. Yes, but I want to learn the skills of ocean sailing. I see. 
Well, I admire your ambition. Um, but I can't make you a captain on the Atlantic. Only first mate. Will you take the job? Oh, yes I will, with gratitude. Christopher. Huh? Father Martins, I was going to come and see you this afternoon. And I know why. Father Mendes told me you were leaving the Academy of Navigation. Yes, but first I wanted to thank you for your great kindness. It's a pleasure to help a hard-working young man like you. I know you were not always well-treated during your stay here, but I hope you'll forgive those who offended you. They were not evil, just ignorant. Well, goodbye, Christopher, and good luck. Thank you. During today's lecture, we will begin by examining the latest progress made by Portuguese explorers in their voyages on the Atlantic Ocean. Let us begin with Gomez and his discovery of the Gold Coast. Library, I'm going to miss it. For something. Hmm? Oh. Uh, hello. Good day. Well, there's a certain book about the Madeira Islands. You must mean the one called Life on Porto Santo, right? Yes, that's the one. I can tell you exactly where it is. It's right here. Thank you. But are you quite sure you're finished with it? Yes, I'm sure about that. And having read the book, I recommend it highly. It's clearly written and very informative. It describes the island of Porto Santo in great detail. Though I'm not sure you'd care much about a tiny island in the Atlantic. Ah, but I do care deeply about that little island. You see, I was born there. Were you really? What a thrill! To wake up every day surrounded by the wide ocean? <laughs> oh, it was wonderful. Do you love the ocean too? Mm, yes, I'm a sailor. You must have an exciting life. Well, it hasn't been very exciting lately because I've been studying here at the Academy of Navigation. How lucky you are! Huh? I'd study here if the Academy admitted young ladies. But it doesn't, so I read on my own. I just read Marco Polo's description of the world. Oh, that! I've heard it's full of fairy tales, silly stories of exotic lads and distant oceans. I can't be bothered reading nonsense like that. Nonsense? The book is no such thing. Huh? If you had taken the trouble to read it instead of believing what others told you about it, you would have seen the truth for yourself. The description of the world is a fascinating book, believe me. Uh-huh. Hm. <gasps> I must apologize. I'm afraid I became somewhat carried away. You see, that book was a favorite of my late father. Oh. Felipe, huh? dear! Huh? A thousand pardons for keeping you waiting. Ha 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 You must be tired. Allow me to escort you home. Martha, tell my coachman to bring the carriage. Yes, Don Pedro, right away. Hmm, I see you have company, Felipa. Oh, yes. This man helped me find a book I wanted. How unusually gentlemanly of him. Now then. Hmm. <laughs> Hmm? Well, shall we go? <laughs> hmm? Philippa. She talked about Marco Polo's writings.
Christopher from home. Christopher? Oh, hello, Bartholomew. What are you reading now? A book. It's wonderful. Oh, and who wrote this wonderful book? Marco Polo. Huh? I do not believe it. You're reading the description of the world, but everyone knows it's simply a fairy tale. That was what I always thought, too. Until I started reading it, it's a fascinating book, and it's full of valuable information about the Orient. Hmm. You never cease to amaze me, Christopher. Who else but you would read a book by Marco Polo? Well, enjoy your reading. I'm going to bed. Hmm. Quotidianum da novis orie, et demite novis de vita nostra, sicut et nos dimitibus de vitoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentationem, sed libera nos amalo. Amen. Huh? Christopher, what is it? Christopher, are you all right? <laughs> I've never felt better in my life. Huh? Excuse me. Yeah. I beg your pardon. Huh? Christopher! Oh. Martha, would you be good enough to fetch the cat? <clears throat> huh? Good morning. Good morning, Senor. Uh... <laughs> Columbus. My name is Christopher Columbus. Senor Columbus, I am Felipe Moniz de Perestrello. It's a pleasure to know you. No, the pleasure is mutual. When I saw you here, I just had to tell you that I took your advice and read Marco Polo's book. It was fascinating. Uh, did you really enjoy it? Very much. Oh, I remember I wasn't very polite when we discussed it. Oh, that's all right. Oh. <laughs> well, well. It was a wonderful book. And to think I would never have read it if I hadn't met you. Time to leave, miss. Thank you. I'm afraid I have to go now. Oh. But then, I'll see you here next Sunday. Or even sooner, if you allow me to pay you a visit. Oh, I'd like that, although my mother... Miss Philippa, Miss Philippa, huh? the carriage is waiting for you. Thank you, Martha. If you want to visit me, look for the Perestrello house. Huh? <laughs> Why, Christopher. From the look of it, I'd say that young lady has a hold on your affections. Who is she? Oh, Felipe Moniz de Perestrello. Did you say Perestrello? Christopher, the Perestrellos are a noble family. They're very well connected here. I don't care about that. You don't, but they do. You should forget Felipe right now. Forget her? That's right. Christopher, don't you understand? You're a commoner. No matter how you may feel about her, her family is never going to let you close to her. Most likely, they've chosen a husband for her. And you can be sure he's a nobleman. For your own good, forget her. I'd like to... Whose carriage is that? Good day. Uh, my name is Christopher Columbus, madam. And what can we do for you, sir? Well, actually, I've come to visit Miss Felipe, if I may. My daughter has a visitor this afternoon. Then perhaps I could return a little... No, you will not return. But I... Young man, my daughter Felipe is a distinguished lady of high social station. It would not be appropriate for her to consort with a commoner. Do not trouble us again. Wait, if I could only see her... 
My divine Philippa, this time next month I shall be the captain of a caravel bound for the coast of Africa. Ah, oh, you poor sweet thing, I know you'll miss me terribly, but I must do it for the glory of Portugal and, of course, to add luster to my reputation. <laughs> and when I return, celestial Philippa, you shall have the honor to become my wife. <sighs> Mother, who is at the door? A pushy young man named Christopher Columbus. <gasps> huh? I informed him that you had a visitor, my dear Philippa. He seemed very disappointed. Did he say when he'd return? My dear, he'll never return. tried to visit Philippa at her family's house? Yes, but her mother told me to go away. Ah, oh, how could you be so reckless? That sort of thing isn't done, Christopher. Who cares? I wanted to see her. But she already has a suitor. What? How do you know that? When I learned you were interested in her, I made some inquiries. Her suitor is a nobleman and a student at the academy, Don Pedro Dulmo. Aha! He was the visitor. Hmm? Christopher! Glad you're here. I found you a job. It's a voyage on the Atlantic, and it will take you far north. North? Hmm? The ship is bound for England. From there, it will head all the way up to Iceland. Think your brother will take the job, Bartholomew? Mm -hmm. <laughs> of course I will. It's on the Atlantic. In that case, I'll expect you in my office first thing tomorrow. There are papers to be signed, charts to be consulted, and I'm sure you'll want to have a look at the ship. Am I right? Uh-huh. That's settled, then. I'm confident you'll make an outstanding first mate. Thanks. When do we sail? The day after tomorrow, on the morning tide. Signor Rossi, wait. That's awfully short notice. Huh? But the post came open today. The original mate's fallen ill. Hmm. Hmm. No matter. I'll be ready. Christopher, <laughs> are you sure about this? Mm-hmm. Well, then, I'll see you in my office bright and early. And Christopher, if you'll permit me to offer you a word of advice, find yourself some warm clothes for the trip. <laughs> because where you're going, if a man isn't dressed up very warmly, he'll be shivering harder than his ship's timbers. <laughs> harder than his ship's timbers. Oh, that's rich. <laughs> Won't change your mind? No, Bartholomew, I've decided. Going back to sea is the best thing I can do. But, Christopher, this isn't like you. You're just giving up. What are you talking about? I'm talking about Philippa. You're admitting defeat after a single setback. No, I care too much about her to give up without a struggle, but I've decided to be more indirect. Indirect? Mm-hmm. Philippa's mother won't let me see her, but I can still let her know how I feel. Oh, how's that? Hmm. <laughs> In writing, of course, but I'll need you to deliver this letter. Huh? <laughs> I should have known you won't give up till you've won Philippa's heart. Don't worry, Christopher. I'll see that she gets this. Dear Philippa, tomorrow I shall embark on a sea voyage of several months. Before I left, I wanted you to know that I have thought only of you since we first met. I know your mother disapproves of me, but until I hear from you, I shall continue to nourish the hope that you might someday be able to love a common sailor named Christopher Columbus. Stow those water casks in the port side of the hold, men.
Hoist the main yard. Raise the anchor. The yards are up, and the anchor is safely stowed, sir. She's ready to go whenever you give us the word. Captain, the ship's ready to get underway. Give the order, Columbus. Yes, sir. Right now, set the mainsail. She's caught the wind! Hooray! Christopher. <sighs> I will be waiting for you. 